And a good Sunday morning to you. Happy New Year. Thank you for watching Beyond the Headlines. Well, it may be a new year, but the issues remain the same. And now more than ever, some politicians are making sure voters know where they stand on arguably the biggest issue on this year's ballot, securing the border. And Speaker of the House Mike Johnson led a group of fellow House Republicans on a tour of the U.S.-Mexico border this past week. The group toured the border in Eagle Pass, where the Biden administration temporarily shut down the border, crossing to slow the number of migrants entering the country. In remarks near the border, Speaker Johnson laid the blame for the border crisis on the Biden administration, and the group of GOP lawmakers called for a return to the immigration policies of former President Trump. Under President Biden, America has laid out a welcome mat to illegal immigrants, smugglers, and cartels. He is responsible for the grave threat to our national security and our, and our nation's sovereignty that these policies have created. Well, President Biden has proposed a $106 billion funding package that would provide aid for Ukraine and Israel, as well as funding for U.S. border operations. However, it is stuck in Congress as Republicans say they will not approve the funding without implementing tougher immigration and border policies. Now, in response to the visit, Congressman Henry Cuellar insists that to solve the problem, both sides need to come together. Right now, and I'm glad they're at the border, I think there's like 64 Republicans. As you notice, there's no Democrats there. That's a problem is Democrats do things separately. Republicans do this separately. We got to do it together. I'm hoping that he understands that what we need to do, and they need to listen to the border communities. If they listen to the border communities, they will tell you that, you know, these numbers have to stop. And that's where we start our first episode of the new year here on Beyond the Headlines. But first, let me introduce our panel. Starting to my far left, we have KGNS political contributor Sergio Mora. Sergio, happy hey. new year. KGNS anchor and investigative reporter Mindy Castle. Mindy. Morning. And KGNS general manager Luis Villarreal. Good morning. Well, we're a few days away from the Iowa caucuses, and we're going to hear a lot more, at least on the GOP side, about the border crisis or securing the border, or the immigration issue, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And and this visit to the border by more than 60 Republicans obviously drew a lot of attention. Interesting that Congressman Cuellar says, that's great, but both of us need to be here. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, that's the problem. <clears throat> you know, everything, uh, if everything boils down to individual party agendas and, you know, Congressman Cuellar is asking, why aren't any Democrats here? Well. I would ask Congressman Cuellar, why weren't you joining them? Or did they tell you you couldn't? Mm -hmm. uh, and if they tell you you couldn't, well, then shame on them. But if you could have, why weren't you there? Why doesn't it start with you showing that bipartisanship that you say is required to get this thing done? Well, because this is this is more of a political stunt, more of a break. Well, then why are we even exactly. talking about it? Um, I mean, exactly. again, again, I, 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 mean, I, I agree with you, but why effective. are we talking about it? I mean, it? those images that were just shown are very effective in terms of this is a very big mm -hmm. problem. I think we are very past the days where people can say mm -hmm. there is no crisis. Absolutely. And I think all sides agree that this is a very yeah. big issue. Yeah. Right, so let's I mean, get serious about it. We well, are, but know, the thing is, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But, but the Democrats are proposing one thing, the Republicans are proposing another thing. And, and we think, the Democrats think, that the Republican proposals won't do a whole lot to really fix the issue. It's more grandstanding. It's more, this was the biggest congressional trip ever. I was going to say. 60 some, 60 some right. members of Congress at the same time going somewhere is the biggest if ever. If they were yeah. bipartisan, it would have meant a lot. Yeah. It would have, and it would have definitely shown that there is a big interest in making sure that yeah. this issue is resolved or somewhat in 2024. I am glad that they took the effort to come down, the 64, 65 of them, because at some point, the more people that see what's happening in Eagle Pass and across the border, the better. So when they, they do go back to Washington, they've got the images of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming over illegally. Um, I think the more people that actually see it, taste it, smell it, breathe it, the better. But now let's see what happens when they all go back and 
try to get something done because it's 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 crazy just how many people are trying to come over illegally. Exactly, and and I mean the amounts are so overwhelming in that they always bring out bring bring back the Trump era policies. I mean the, the Trump Trump the 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 majority of, like a big part of his presidency was during the pandemic. The numbers were just as high as the president before and, and the president under after. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the thing is, we have to keep in mind that, that, that whatever funding, like, they could add 10 billion, 20 billion, 30 billion. I'm going to fat check you more, on that, on, on that, on that statistic. I'm going to fat check you on that. Please no, do. No, I'll come back to Please, that because yes, I, 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 I think you're that. just. I'm not talking. <laughs> but, uh, I, I have no no reason right now or no I mean, tools it, it, to fight it, it, that. It, it, it was it was it, the, the the question is the system is broken and it, and, and it's been people, broken people, for years. But the, the system is broken. For, uh, asking for asylum is is. is is they're taking advantage. A lot of these people have legitimate claims to asylum, but the majority the don't. The majority don't, but the and system is broken. And only a congressional fix would fix that issue. The system yeah. is broken at a basic level yes. because, once again, time and time, as it happens every time, party ahead of country. Party ahead of the benefit for what is good for everybody. It's always about the party, the party, the party. Well, I, Loyalty I, and allegiance to the party is what is going, what is going to continue to destroy right. the way we do things. You're right. And it goes on both sides right. of the border. Do not say you're that it's right. only the Republicans because the Democrats just do it just as much. And it's all the allegiance to the party that 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 manipulates everything that, hap that you're, happens. You're, you're, you're right. It's it's tribalism at its worst. At its worst. I think it's gotten worse over the years, but at the same time, this is an issue, this is a very potent issue that conservatives all over the world take advantage of immigration, they native, use the native, fear tactic. nativism, xenophobia, yes. like the others are coming to take our stuff. I you agree. Know, and unfortunately, there are ignorant people time. out there that take it for what, you know, they, they take the message and, 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 and accept it, it and they believe Look, it. Yeah. A couple of months yeah. ago, we sat here and everybody called what Governor Abbott was doing, busing the migrants out of Texas, yeah. a political stunt. Yes. But look what you have now. You've got mayors in Chicago, in, in New Miami. York, and they're saying, hey, you know, they're criticizing him, of course, mm -hmm. but also what Mindy said, saying. people are beginning to realize what, what is actually happening here right. on the border. So yeah. was it a political yeah. stunt or was it? an effective I, I totally tool in getting people you. to understand. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been going through this for a long time and, you know, now others, like you said, are starting to feel what we feel. There's just so many people coming in illegally and maybe this is exactly what we need to show um, the rest of the nation that we've got to get something Look, done. Look, there, there are, you know, and, and I know things are not easily fixed. I understand that. But there are simple, common sense things that tell you how, how does that happen? Why do we not deport people faster? If they don't because have a legitimate a claim, what the, process, they are breaking the rule of process, law by coming, by coming in, in illegally. Yeah. That is the first law break. That so, is right. Okay, so get out of here. But the issue so, is... Because the issue now is, you're rewarding these people for breaking the law. Well, the issue is they catch somebody that crossed... And the first thing that they say is, I'm here to claim asylum. Yeah. So that process kicks okay, in. Go back, and, go and back to our embassy from your country and request the asylum over there. Yes. I think that that is a good solution. Well, that was in place. Well, th there's also solutions in place where they have to at least have asked for asylum in countries in transit before they reach before the they U.S. Right. Before they but apply. okay, so I am, and that is a Biden initiative. But so, I am. So a, we are but trying. But is that, but is that being done? Why do we have to throw that in there? Yeah. Why does it matter who's because initiative they it was? Say, they See, say that the Democrats are not doing anything, and that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Every time Who we start... Who is the head of the Border Patrol? Every time we start with the Democrats did this, or the Republicans did I'll go even further than that. Every time you see a story on television, whether it's our networks or cable networks or whatever, that put an R or a D before somebody's name, we are already making a Labeling. decision for the viewer, for the, per the person that is listening. When yeah. you say, you 
If you hadn't I, said I, I, that it was Biden's idea, I would have said, oh, wow, that was a great thing. But since you said it's a Biden idea, no, oh, it was you bad. Know, yeah, yeah, was like, it's, it's a bad, bad idea. idea. No way, I saw your face. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. So why, why do we have to do that? Why can't we just, why does it matter if it was Obama or Clinton or Trump or Reagan? Well, but that's whoever. the country that we live in. We're well, in a two-party system. But that's system. what's wrong. I mean, so do we just, just put up with it and we move on? Well, 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 and we're I, in a country that follows the laws. Yeah. But know? I think, so okay, laws if, have to be changed. When, 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 when this, when this initiative took over where, where they changed the asylum, they limited the, the people that could apply, they put dr numbers dramatically dropped. When Trump built his wall, no numbers dropped. You know, when they put the boys, no numbers dropped. When they put the concertina wire, no numbers dropped. So the thing is... Again, I'm going to fact what, what check is, you on all those. What, 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 is the, <laughs> what, what is the approach? Punitive? For the cameras, look at all these barriers and, and look at all these sharp objects so you're I'm putting right. in the way. Or the Democrats' approach. Okay, let's try to fix the asylum process so that less of these people feel that they have and, a chance to get in. And how do you fix period. the asylum process? Congress. Uh, but how, what, what would it take? The parties need to work together. Right. And, 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 and do the, what? With a and come, uh, come up with a comprehensive immigration reform that's going to yeah. address not only the asylum issue, but all of the aspects in immigration. All of the aspects, period. including the people that uh, employ illegals yes. and benefit tremendously by it, some of them exactly. by huge industries in this country exactly. that, right. that, that, that do this. So it is a massive problem. But, we could sit here and talk for but days about it. But the thing is, it, it, it but, shouldn't. It shouldn't. Yeah. It, that the aid to Ukraine, to Israel, to Taiwan should okay, be so held that, that so is that, completely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so yeah. take it out and yeah. just send a bill yeah. that only addresses immigration. Yeah, absolutely. Why, why do, why does President... Uh, it exists. I was going to call him Clinton, but it's not Clinton. <laughs> What's his <laughs> name? <laughs> Biden. Biden. <laughs> why does President Biden not send just a, a, a proposal that it's only for immigration? It's yeah. without well, I mean, tying that's it. a political ploy. Well, well that's yeah, political yeah it's just as bad as you know, the Republicans you, you saying we're help, not going to touch you it. You want to help the send war me, victims, send then me, you got to do this. Send me a standalone immigration toughness Protection Act yeah. or whatever. <laughs> All right. We need to wrap it, up. It, it is. Okay. Why? Because they're telling me I need to wrap up. Okay, fine. Talk about other Clinton. Stuff. Someone's been reading the Epstein documents, right? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean he did anything wrong. <laughs> Depends on what it is. When we come back, will he or won't he be on the ballot, that is, the latest on former President Trump's fight to remain on the ballot in Colorado and Maine and wherever else they uh, make him ineligible. That's next. And welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. Thanks for staying with us. Former President Donald Trump has asked the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn Colorado State's ruling that deems him ineligible to appear on the 2024 Republican primary election ballots due to his actions on January the 6th. Now, in the filing, Trump's lawyers saying, quote, if the ruling is allowed to stand, it would mark the first time in the history of the United States that the judiciary has prevented voters from casting ballots for the leading major party presidential candidate. Well, the attorney's adding that the court should, quote, return the right to vote for their candidate of choice to the voters. The Trump campaign calling Colorado's decision, quote, an un-American, unconstitutional act of election interference. Now, on Tuesday of this past week, Trump's legal team appealed a similar decision by Maine's Secretary of State to keep him off the primary ballot. The appeals come as the 2024 presidential campaign heats up with the Iowa caucuses soon to be happening. So this is where we continue the conversation. And as is with President Trump, firsts on many fronts, this time first uh, candidate to be deemed ineligible for a primary. Certified. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm hearing a little bit of mixed reaction on this, to be honest with you. I'm even hearing some Democrats yeah. a little concerned that he's not going to be on the ballot. Um, Serge, your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, the governor of California, big Democrat, Gavin mm -hmm. Newsom, said in California we defeat our opponents at the polls. David Axelrod said there's tens of millions of people that want to vote for him. Denying them that right won't go well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 a, it's a huge conundrum because, if, I mean, if you participated in January 6th, if you were there, if the FBI got you, if you got indicted, if you got prosecuted, and you decide to run for county judge, they're going to do the exact same thing, and there's nothing you could do about it. 
So do we apply the law evenly or do we yeah. say, okay, this guy, we're not going to apply um, the amendment uh, 14 of the Constitution that prevents someone that participated in an insurrection mm -hmm. to run for office, which yeah. was instituted after the Civil War. Is this, mm -hmm. is this rule applicable to accusations or convictions? It's, it's, I'm not too clear. I know that it is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution and, and, and like which I told reads, you. Which reads that if you are a if convicted. You participated, yeah. in, in overthrowing your in government, overthrowing you, you cannot were convicted run for, yes. of doing such uh -huh. a thing. Yes. Last time I read, President Trump has not been convicted of anything. That is correct. All right, so if that is the reasoning behind the Secretary of State mm -hmm secretaries of state mm -hmm. doing this. I, I don't think they have a leg to stand yeah. on and I think it'll be overthrown. But more to the point, the, 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 and I'm sorry, I apologize for saying this, but the Democrats keep going back to the well and keep poking the fire. And the more they do, the more they, they fear this, the more they fan the flames of the political base that supports President Trump. Yeah. And the more they throw accusations, these people are not going to change their mind. They're going to vote for him even if he's in jail. Yeah. And so why does it take somebody with a moderate IQ like myself to figure that out and all these people who are supposed to be, you know, at the top of the chain, why can't they see that? Why, why can't your party not realize that by doing this, they are contributing to the popularity and... Of course. And, and I mean, why is that I mean, so the, hard the, to the see? Republican nomination slipped away from the rest of the field the minute the indictments <clears throat> against Trump started coming Agreed. down. Agreed. Um, you're, you're completely correct. But I mean, it goes back to the same thing in that these officials are just doing their job. In that if, 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 if the Secretary of State, if the party chair is here, someone turns in their application to get on the ballot and there's something that legally keeps them off the ballot, I'm not too sure if about that the specifics is the case, of the legalities the in case, Colorado and Maine. If that is the case, he would be off the ballot in all 50 states. I was just going to say that. Yeah. If that the was the case, but the is what where, where, where is the cons consistency? There is no exactly. consistency. There's yeah. no, there's, Again, there's because only the ones that are right. panicking and saying, I got to yeah. do something to keep well, these guys away. How can we have two I gotta states? I got to do something to do you know. my no, job. No, yeah. this is, yeah. no. Of this course. is not about doing their job. Of course it is. This is about yes, keeping is. this guy away from the White House. No, and, and, that is the ultimate goal. That is the goal, right? Well, I mean, that is the goal. The goal in that, hey, if you. The goal is to keep him away from the White House at any cost. No, if you do not qualify, you're not getting on the no, ballot. No, no, that's no, the no. determination but, but, that a court made in Colorado, the Supreme Court of Colorado, and that's a determination the Secretary of State did in Maine. One was executive, one was judicial. Yeah. But how can two states read a bill so or read the language so differently from 48 well, other states? Well, it depends states. if you're a Democrat or you know, you're a Republican. That, 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 that's the that's thing the, that... You, know, you read differently. You read from right to left or from left to right. <laughs> Every, it just no. doesn't make sense because the other 48 <laughs> states are going to have them on the ballot, but these two aren't. So well, what is I mean, that going to do? You've sense. got the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. Yeah. This is going to loom large because how does that how does that affect the vote in Iowa? If you think president's going to be off the ballot in two states, do do he I, can still win the nomination? He's still going to take. He's still going to win the nomination without those two states. The, all of these issues have to come to some sort of um, solution, uh, solution yeah. before, before the primaries, before the election in November, yeah. and if they haven't been solved in for the immigration crisis decades, you know, now this Trump issue, if they haven't been solved time, in a timely manner in the past, yeah. what makes us think they're going to yeah. be solved and in a timely manner now? And this is just going to open up for lawsuits after the presidential race. I mean, yeah. we're just going to drag this on. I, I, I wish a decision could just be made on whether it is valid or not. Thank God we don't have anything have like that locally. But, but, the, but, the, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. the, but, the, but the thing is, the thing is, is that every state uh, uh, manages its elections independently. Mm. and then they submit the final tally in the form of electoral college votes to Congress and then they ceremoniously count those votes unless they storm the Capitol and somebody tries to stop it right. um, <laughs> then they just do it later but um, ultimately the, the states are very independent when it comes to running their own elections 
well, how they see fit, interpreting yeah. their laws how they see fit. This, this I, is just going to drag I, I, I on. Just, I mean, what irritates me the most about this thing is that, listen, I mean, I, I'll, uh, I would rather not have President Trump be reelected. I, I, I don't think it's good for us for him to go back to the White not because of his policies, but because of what we're going to go through again for another four years. Mm -hmm. but, I, but if he's not going to be there, I want it to be done properly, right. legally, and by votes, not by political or lawyering or legalese or whatever. He needs to be told, you did not win, sir. And end of story. Now, I agree. I know he will not accept it, and we're still going to have to deal with it. I get it. But going through all these motions and having all these, like you just said, having all these things lingering and looming large mm -hmm. is just fueling the fire for I can already see it come mm -hmm. November, whatever right. it is, and at the night say, no, no, I am not losing because of this, this, they this, and that. They took me off of the battle. They took me off the battle. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And just, yeah. just for the record, the, uh, the 14th Amendment in Section 3 does not mention anything about conviction. It simply says no member, and it includes president, vice president, or any uh, Congress. Uh, all of those shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same. Wow. Um, so, so, or just given engaged. aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Uh -huh. So, there's so nothing in there about very conviction. The, the, the thing very. is, is that uh, Trump lost against Biden uh, four years ago. And that was before January 6th. That was before he tried to overturn the election. I have faith in the country that they are going you to defeat him You honestly think that the again. people that voted for him four years ago are, are, are not going to vote for him again? The Biden people that voted for him four Trump, years Trump. ago are, but they weren't enough to give him a victory. He was very, very far from a victory. question are the people that voted for Biden four years ago. Yeah, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, that's yeah. a different thing. Yeah, but I I think maybe they'll vote for yeah. another Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy. Right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll take a look back at the one thing our panelists cannot stop thinking about. Stay with us. Okay, it's the one thing our panelists cannot stop thinking about from the past week, Sergio. <laughs> um, well, Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, I don't know how you guys yeah, we got ran the video. in your Let's New Year, but in the beautiful Paris, they saw this, and this has been making the rounds because oh of the dystopian nature <laughs> of everyone <laughs> filming the fireworks show at the exact same time. And if you go to any concert right now, if you go to any event, yeah. you'll thing. see the same thing. I've done it. I've never seen the videos that I've taken. Um, while looking for this video, we saw a million copies yeah. of it because there's a million people filming mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and no it one's just, moving. And it misses the point. I <laughs> yeah. mean, that You're video, not enjoying yeah. it. That video sure is not obviously a going to be online. Are you sure it's not AI? Huh? <laughs> Are you sure it's not AI? Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone's doing yeah, the same thing. I know. Yeah. I know. A lot of shows right now, like they'll take your phone, they'll put it in a little yeah. bag, and it makes all the difference yeah. in the world because wow. you could enjoy the moment. You know, yeah. and unfortunately, you see it at, at graduations Everything. and things like oh, that. No. It's like, pay attention, your son or daughter is about to walk. Yeah. yeah, and like you're feel it. busy. You just, you know, just you feel like you have to capture you're the not moment. Going to but you want to capture it. the yeah. moment to have to preserve. I'm sure there's video know? of it. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can get a copy. Exactly. Yeah. There'll yeah. be a picture uh, of it. Mindy. You're not the only one with a video. <laughs> Mindy. 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 Okie doke. Well, speaking of kids and, and high school graduations, the fast perform. This is for. All parents out there who have college kids or college-bound kids just wanted to remind everybody that the new FAFSA, much simpler 2024-2025 FAFSA, it stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is now available to fill out. I want to mention, though, that we have been hearing that there are scammers out there that are actually charging parents to fill out a FAFSA form. Those are scammers. The FAFSA form, as it says in its name, is free. So go on to the actual website. The FAFSA website is studentaid.gov. Don't go to any other website and fill out the form right there. Please. And let your kids Please. do it. Please. Hey, so everybody Sorry. saw this video, I assume, and this is just, I mean, I can't get this video out of my head. Uh, the judge is sitting there handing some sort of verdict and a conviction. Oh, there he goes. Oh, my God. Wow. To take the judge. I mean, come on. Wow. I mean, and fortunately, the judge did suffer some minor injuries yeah. and she had some uh, stuff happened to her shoulder and scratches. So but did the marshal. The marshal, yeah, the marshal actually went and to the hospital. Right, yeah. but... 
but that's just crazy. It is nuts. Yeah. Wow, that someone okay. would do oh that. God, oh. So I just have a simple question. Show the picture. This is Ted Cruz at the uh, University of Texas game on Monday. Where's my picture? Where's my picture? Do I look like Ted Cruz? <laughs> <laughs> yes, except for the I nose, know, brother, but everything bitch. else, yeah. So, well, you've got the beard. We tend to, we, we post stories on, on TikTok, uh -huh. and uh, Justin in our digital department posted a story with me anchoring, and somebody <laughs> commented <laughs> that I look like Ted Cruz, and then a couple of people here in the newsroom started sending me... Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> pictures of me and talk. Uh, this was from yesterday, and Justin called us the the double mint twins. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see it. Maybe I just because of the the the, yeah, the, the, the color pepper, of the beard. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Anyway, you, you need the boots. The hair slicked you down. You might be related. <laughs> <laughs> Take a DNA test. Wow. I've never been to Cancun, and I promise. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Ted.